Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm here bringing you guys a brand new mod spotlight on a mod that's uh, pretty much new. Um, it has some uh, ties back to a mod you guys have seen before, but it's pretty much redone, brand new, all kinds of cool stuff. This is Tinker's Construct. Uh, Tinker's Construct is a really neat mod that adds a bunch of cool stuff to the game. It adds some world gen ores, it adds uh, a bunch of tool creation, and it gives you the ability to uh, melt down some metals, create different uh, combinations of metals, and then uh, create all kinds and nifty tools using uh, some patterns and some stencils and then you can create all kinds of different like shovels and swords and all kinds of other neat stuff and in the end you can come up with some really neat uh, different items with different abilities and different you know cool stuff so we're going to check out Tinker's Construct which adds multiple types of swords actually you get long swords and broad swords and rapiers and all this nifty stuff uh, plenty to check out in Tinker's Construct so without further ado I'm going to start messing around with this thing and show you guys how to make Make all kinds of nifty and cool tools with this mod. All right, let's take a look. All right, handy little tip for those who are playing with Tinker's Construct. When you create a new world or a new character on a server, you're instantly given the materials and you book. This is the basic guide to Tinker's Construct. There's actually three books like this, and the book will continue to get updated as the mod gets updated, so hang on to it because new things will be added all the time. It gives you some basic information to start with, and then it shows off showing you some of the basic items that you're going to want to make. Uh, first off, you're going to want to start off with these basic wooden things, and then you're going to want to upgrade to seared bricks so you can make these really neat smelteries to melt down metals and combine them into new metals. We'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, we're going to make a couple of the first items. Uh, we're going to want to make a stencil table, we're going to want to make a part crafter, a pattern chest, and a tool station. And for each of these, you guys might have noticed, uh, you're going to need uh, this nifty little gadget right here. It's called the blank pattern, okay? Blank pattern with a uh, piece of wood will get you the part builder. A blank pattern with this guy get you the stencil table, okay? And then uh, finally, you're gonna want a tool station, which is a crafting table, okay? Makes sense. So these three items are the most important things that you're going to want to get. Now you're also going to want to get yourself a pattern chest, which is a chest with a pattern on it, okay? And I'll show you how each of these guys go together and what they do right now. So uh, the first one you're going to want to put together is the stencil table, okay? The stencil table is important because it allows you to create your stencils. And you're going to want to turn off any eye for this because there's a lot of extra information on these, uh, on these GUIs. Um, the other thing you might have noticed is that there's a reason that I actually crafted these items. It's because when you craft them you get materials in you the second book so by crafting the table you get the book automatically it just kind of shows up in your inventory like magic and this gives you all kinds of information further about how to make different tools and different materials and all kinds of interesting stuff so I'm not gonna go through it all right now but basically you can make all kinds of nifty things so let's start off with a basic stencil it's really easy to create a stencil just place one of those blank patterns in the stencil table and then click the next pattern button and you'll be able to choose the different patterns that are available now each of these patterns has a purpose. You've got the pickaxe head pattern uh, that'll make pickaxes. You've got the shovel head pattern that requires and makes shovels. And then axes and stuff makes sense so far. Sword blade pattern. None of this is in, is, is in any way unfamiliar until you get to the guard patterns. So you get like the wide guard, the hand guard, and the crossbar, and the tool binding pattern. That stuff you're going to probably say like, what is all that? Don't worry, I'll get to it. Uh, and then you can get like the tool rod pattern, and then we're back to the pickaxe head pattern. All told, we've got, uh, I don't know, maybe 11 or 12 different patterns, so you can see them all here. Uh, and these are just the basic patterns, the more advanced version of these that we'll get to in a little bit. Okay, so let's make a couple of them real quick. Let's show uh, making a pickaxe, because that's always fun. We'll get a pickaxe head pattern, all right? We're going to need that. Now, according to the book here, by the way, in order to make a pickaxe, we're going to need a uh, pickaxe head, a tool rod, and then finally, a tool binding, okay? So we're going to actually need three items for this. So let's go find them, all right? The uh, tool rod, I think, is, uh, oh, there's the binding. We're going to need one of them. And then we're going to need the tool rod. Okay, cool. Now the next thing we're going to need is the part builder. Okay, that guy goes down in your world wherever you want, like so. Now the good part about this is uh, you use the part builder to make the actual pieces of metal and you combine the patterns with the metal to get what you need. Okay, so in order to get, for example, an iron pickaxe head, you combine a piece of iron with the pickaxe head pattern. 
Let's try that out now. So all you got to do to make a uh, tool part, as it tells you here, place a pattern and a material on the left to get started. All right, so pickaxe head on the left and material on the left. And boom, we've got an iron pickaxe head. It gives you the information about it on the right here. So you can see its base durability, its handle modifier, its mining speed, its mining level, like pretty much like what kind of items can it mine up to, um, and its base attack damage, that kind of interesting stuff. Now, if you're interested in these stats and what they are without actually placing each item inside the part builder, you can look it up in the Materials and U book. So if we switch over here, first off, it shows you all the ways to craft the different items and what they do. For example, different swords have different abilities built into them, which is pretty neat. Um, but uh, we'll get into some of those more later. What I want to show you right now is the uh, materials themselves. You can see all the stats on the materials once you get uh, into those pages. So you can see here that you get um, you know, the, the different materials that they break down down into and then what they do. So wood, for example, has a durability of 59 uh, compared to iron, which has a durability of 250. So it'll last longer. Uh, wood has a handle modifier of 1.0. So what does this mean? Durability only affects like the head of the item. So like the, the pickaxe head is affected uh, by the durability. So an iron pickaxe head will have 250 durability, regardless of what is on the uh, binding or the handle. However, then you get into the handle modifier and whatever material you use for the handle uh, actually has an effect on the affected durability. So for example, if we had an iron handle and an iron head, the head gives us 250 durability, and then the iron handle modifies that durability and makes it 1.3 times, which comes out to about 325. So by using iron as the handle of the tool, you get more durability. Uh, now, if you use something better than that, uh, you know, for example, you could jump over here to, let's find something that has better, uh, here we go, green slime. Soft and springy, it seems to last forever. The handle modifier on this is five times. So that would be 250 times five uh, if you made a handle out of slime and then kept the head um, at iron level, which is 250. Cool. So uh, you can see here that if you made a full tool out of iron, you'd get 325 durability total because you get 250 times 1.3x. Cool. The mining speed is 6.0. So the mining speed is determined by the uh, head of the material's head, So and then the uh, harvest level as well, as is the attack. And then finally, the material ability is when you make an item with this material, you get certain extra abilities, like this one, Reinforced 1, uh, where stone will give you a shoddy level uh, ability. So there's a bunch of different neat abilities in here. So for example, uh, Cactus gives you the spiny ability. We'll check that out later for sure. Um, plenty of nifty things. You get more uh, uh, reinforcement by using Obsidian. Uh, you get some other cool effects later on down the line as well. So flip through the book to determine what you want. But like I said, if you go ahead and stick it in the table here, we'll be able to check it out. So let's make an entirely iron tool. Uh, you can make two things at a time here. So first off, uh, I want to show you that the material cost of a pickaxe head pattern is one. So in order to make a pickaxe head, you need one iron ingot. Cool. We'll get that. Boom. Nice. Now, uh, the material cost for the tool binding, because remember, according to the book here, in order to make a... Um, a pickaxe, you're going to need a head, a rod, and a tool binding, okay? That material cost is 0.5. So that means if I put iron in here, we're going to use up half of the iron ingot, and then we're going to get what's called an iron chunk, and that's basically half of an iron ingot. So, you know, we've got one full one here, we need half, we get half back, okay? And uh, if we wanted to, once we craft this, we can go ahead and use this iron chunk to make another one. Now, of course, since this is only half, we're not going to get another chunk, so that makes sense, okay? But if we wanted to, we could also use obsidian, for example, and you can see that obsidian has um, a, a slightly different modifier. And uh, remember, we checked in the book here that obsidian gives you a, a reinforcement ability. So let's see, where's obsidian? Reinforced level three. So let's give that a try. I want to see how that works out for us as a binding. Now, the last thing we're going to need is the tool rod. And uh, for that, we can go ahead and do uh, whatever we want. Uh, we could make uh, something out of diamond. So actually, I wanted to do that. Um, nope, diamond is not a valid tool material. Okay, um, but is gold? Nope, not even gold. All right, so let's stick with the iron originally. So we got the iron rod, and again, that's a half material cost. So we get the iron chunk back, and we get the iron rod. Cool. Now, if you don't want to carry all these different um, pickaxe head patterns and all this other crazy stuff around, this is where the material chest comes in. Simply place it next to the part builder, and now you've got access to this materials chest, or the pattern chest, whenever you want. So uh, you can only, I believe, Oh, you can. You can put other items in there. Cool. That's nice. So you can put your patterns and other items in there whenever you need. And then if you need to access them while you're in the part builder, it works out. So now that I've got the three components that I need, the iron rod, the obsidian binding, 
and the iron pickaxe head, let's go check out how to put it together. And of course, for that, we're gonna need the tool station. Real simple. Uh, the tool station has an interface on the left to tell it exactly what you're making. So here we've got a pickaxe, that's what I'm making. And it'll tell you right here the required parts, a pickaxe head, a tool binding, and a handle. So let's put them all together here. Obsidian binding and a handle. Cool, look at that. So we've got this reinforced three pickaxe because we use the binding. And you can see, even see that on the top here, there's a little bit of purple showing that there is a purple um, obsidian binding. So it's got extra reinforcement. You can also see the durability is 325 because we did the iron pickaxe head, which is 250, uh, with the modifier of 1.3 on the iron rod. Okay, now if I put an iron one in here, it's the same durability. So iron bindings don't affect durability. All right, but uh, it does not have the reinforcement. It only has reinforced one, okay? Cool. Now the final thing to note here is um, we can name it. Cool, so we'll call it Dire Pick 1. Sounds like a good name. And now when we mouse over, we'll see it's Dire Pick 1. And again, it has reinforced on it, which basically each level of reinforcement has a 10% chance of not using durability. So it's kind of like that enchant, cool? Hooray, we've got Dire Pick 1, and oh boy, it's nighttime. And of course, the pickaxe does exactly what you'd expect it to. It mines. Cool. Uh, the pickaxe does just a great job mining, and uh, it'll take care of doing whatever you want it to do as a pickaxe. Uh, like we said, it had the mining speed of six, so it's a pretty decent speed here, and it does a good job of mining. So, seems pretty simple, right? Don't worry, there's plenty more that you can do with these things. Let's take a look. So next up, I want to demonstrate something to you guys uh, that's pretty important. I'm going to make another pickaxe, but I'm going to make it entirely out of paper. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we're going to need to use a paper rod here. Okay, and then uh, a paper pickaxe head. You can see that required two pieces of paper. And then finally over here, I wanted to get myself a uh, paper binding. Okay, now paper, paper has some interesting stats on it. Let's take a look real fast. It's got a uh, paper stack has a, a very low durability with a handle modifier of 0.3x. That means it's probably going to uh, last less than uh, it would with a better handle modifier. So full tool durability has nine uses on it. Not good. Uh, very slow mining speed can only harvest up to stone um, but it gives you an extra modifier so that's interesting let's take a look I haven't shown you guys modifiers yet but there's a reason that I'm making this out of paper let's go ahead and use our tool station to put together a paper pickaxe hilarious I know all right paper pickaxe writable so again back down here mining very slow durability does not last long so I'm interested to see something I want to show you guys this when we run out of durability here and you can see I'm purposely mining material that I shouldn't be just to make the durability run out quicker. Uh-oh, it's broken, but I still have it. What's up with that? Uh, well, we've got a broken pickaxe here. What happens is uh, you will make these tools and they will never go away. They will last forever. Of course, uh, you can no longer use them for, uh, you know, after they've broken. They'll have a very, very, very slow mining speed, but they will always stay with you. And they'll make that broken noise every time they try and mine something, which is funny. But, uh, yeah, basically, never lose these tools. What can you do with them? You can repair them. Let's go into how to repair your tools right now by going over to the tool station. And just go ahead and throw this in here on the tab that says repair. It's the default one. All right, so place your broken tool in the slot there. And you can come over here and uh, put the modifier in. Now, the tool, of course, goes in the slot that looks like the tool. Okay, and you've got the pickaxe broken being the output. Now, if you want to repair it, simply place uh, some material in there. So I put a paper stack, which is actually four pieces of paper, and that does a full repair. Um, you know, even one piece of paper will repair this guy because it's, you know, pretty quick and easy to, uh, you know, get repaired. Okay, there we go. Pickaxe is repaired, and once again, full durability, and I can go mining again. I'll just chop up that sand to show you that it's quick and easy. All right, you can do the same with other tools. So uh, we've got our uh, obsidian, uh, you know, reinforced three dire pick just go ahead and throw some iron on there to get it repaired very very nifty now there's other things you can do that i haven't shown you yet for example there's this thing down here modifiers remaining three now i told you guys that the uh writable uh ability gives you more uh modifiers so because each piece of this pickaxe was made with paper and uh paper gives you plus one modifier this paper pickaxe has six total modifiers that you can put on it uh but dire pick one just has three what's a modifier you ask well i'm glad you asked because there's all kinds of cool stuff you can add uh to make modifiers let's take 
take a look. For example, if I want to modify this dire pick one with a diamond, for example, you can see that it just used up one of the modifiers and now it tells you that diamond is on there. And this thing will tell you right here that it's got a durability of plus 500. So note over here the durability is now 825 instead of the uh, original 325. Cool. Uh, now I can put another modifier on there. I think if I do that, is that going to work? No. You have to put one at a time on. Okay. Fair enough. Not a problem. So simply, uh, you know, place your diamond on the left here, your tool on the right, and ta-da! We've now got an extra durability pick. Cool. It goes up to 825 now. Awesome. Um, another one that you can place on here is emeralds. Cool. Uh, emeralds will, if we go over here and check it out, Oh man, gives you plus 50% durability. So instead of a flat 500 durability, which diamonds give, uh, emeralds give you 50% durability. So it uh, pretty much gives you uh, more durability if the base durability is higher than a diamond would. But if the base durability is low, like with iron, uh, it might make sense to use the iron one. Pretty spiffy, not bad at all. Uh, but I'm going to show you some other interesting ones. All right, so let's briefly go over some of the other modifiers you can place on here. Boom, uh, redstone. Hmm, what's redstone doing? Well, it says 1 out of 25, but look, my mining speed increased. Look, it's 6.08 now. Uh, now, redstone, you can go ahead and just keep modifying. It adds the haste ability, so you can keep adding redstone on and just keep on going. Build it on up, and you can see that we're getting slightly faster and faster on our mining speed now. Oh, that's cool. I like that a lot. Uh, so we can just really build this guy up to a maximum of uh, 25 here. Now one thing to note, if you want to keep increasing the haste, just keep applying it. It went up to 50 now after the 25, but note I used my last modifier here. Now there's no more modifiers remaining. So basically, I used two modifiers for the haste. And now that I've built this guy all the way up to 50 out of 50 redstone, you can see I no longer can place things on it, no longer can do modifiers. Um, it's maxed out, okay? So that's pretty much where we're at. But my haste rating is now 10 instead of 6 because I used two of my modifiers for redstone, 25 per modifier, and then diamond. Let's check it out. So down in my little mining test area, oh yeah, much faster pickaxe. Look at that. Nice. So making a brand new pickaxe to demonstrate to you guys some of the other abilities you can place on here. You can see I've got a bunch more items to show you. Necrotic Bone. Ooh, modifier is necrotic. What does that do? Well, according to the tooltip, it says life steal. So I can only assume this thing is going to steal the life of anything you attack with it. Ooh, that would be really good on a... Uh, on a, on a weapon. Now, you will well note, however, that in order to make your necrotic bones here, uh, let's take a look at the recipe for this guy. There is, in fact, no recipe for a necrotic bone. You have to get them from wither skeletons. So hunt down some wither skeletons, get yourself some necrotic bones, cool things to be added to your tools. All right, next up, what else do we got in here? Uh, I want to show you this nifty little one. It's pretty cool. It is this guy, Moss. Auto repair. Oh, that sounds awesome. I got to put auto repair on my tool. Hey, what is up? Auto repair, sweet. Now you should know that the auto repair is pretty slow, but it will slowly but surely repair your tool for you. Uh, around 10 points per minute for the first one. Um, uh, you know, but if you add more auto repair, it gets progressively faster. Neat. Uh, so let's try that out. I want to see here if I put another moss on. See, it would use another modifier uh, to get more moss, but you know, no big deal. Okay, but we're not going to do that. We want to move on to the next modifier. And for that, we're talking about this guy, the lava crystal. Let's check this out. This is a recipe of coal and netherrack and lava. What is that going to do for us? Well, let me show you. Auto smelt. Cool. I'm pretty sure I know what auto smelt means if we had, for example, some iron. Let's just get some. Ta-da! Auto smelt. Nice. All right, let's check out another one. We've got Lapis, but instead you're going to want to put, uh, you know, two here if you can, and Lapis will give you the luck ability. Cool. Now, as you can see, you're going to need a lot of Lapis in order to get a good amount of luck. Um, you can see that if you put the block form in, you get nine at a time, of course, but you could also put the individuals on there, and uh, you could just really go two at a time if you want and just work your way up to uh, a decent amount of luck ability, which is, you know, a really good enchant to have. Not bad, but you're going to need, like I said, a lot of Lapis to get up there. Uh, you could also, if you want, put Nether Quartz on this guy, and that guy is going to increase the attack damage. So you can see our attack damage just went up to two hearts. 
cool. Uh, so by adding nether quartz on there, you can do more damage with your tools. Very awesome. Uh, you could also, if you want, place a diamond and a piece of gold on there. Um, that guy is going to remove a modifier. So you can see here uh, that you get more modifiers remaining when you do that. Oh, that's neat. So if you want to be, it doesn't actually remove the modifier, I misspoke there, but it will let you have more modifiers remaining, which is awesome. And you could also throw a nether star on there to do the same effect. Wow, that's pretty cool. And then there's one more that I want to show you guys. And that modifier is a rechargeable battery and an electronic circuit. Oh boy, it gives you the electric, uh, and it allows you to store EU in your tool. Now this is a little bit interesting, and it's a little bit different than what you guys might be used to. Uh, the tool, if it's not charged with EU, can still mine, okay? But it's going to take ter tool durability damage uh, instead of, um, you know, requiring uh, EU. So, you can keep, uh, you know, filling it with EU, but when it runs out of EU, it falls back to its tool durability. It doesn't just stop mining, okay? So we can see here the tool durability took some damage, even though it still has zero out of the 10,000 energy. But you can throw this into a, uh, you know, bat box from Industrial Craft and charge it back up. So that is all the modifiers that exist right now that you can place on your tools. So a ton of combinations, if you really think about it. There's a bunch of different materials you can make, a bunch of different tool combinations you can come up with, and then you can modify your tools to make them exactly what you want. Maybe you want something that mines super fast, or you want something that has like some really good durability, or it recharges and repairs itself, it can run off energy, it automatically smelts, it does more damage. It, I mean, the list is pretty much endless. The combinations of tools that you can get is ridiculous and we're not done yet and the other thing I should mention about the nether star and the diamond gold thing is that uh, you can see we've got six modifiers on here uh, we can put the gold block and the diamond together and that gives us seven modifiers but we can't do that again we can only do that once however we can then do a nether star and that gives us up to eight modifiers but again we can't do that again so if you want two extra modifiers on there you're going to need to do the diamond gold block thing once and then the nether star thing once so that's why the nether star is there it allows you to do an even stronger uh, more modifiable item so uh, i just tested that on my pickaxe here and you can see we've got two modifiers left on top of the moss lava and electric thing so cool so earlier on in the video, I told you about the world gen that was added to the game. First off, you've got aluminum ore, and then you've also got this nifty stuff, tin, and this stuff here, copper. Cool. Uh, another thing that's added here is this thing right here, but look how long it's taking to mine. Holy cow, that was a lot. Netherrack slag. All right, sounds good. Uh, what's this blue stuff? I don't know, but it's not mining. And I've got a diamond tool? What's up with that? Also, we've got this stuff right here. Also doesn't appear to be breaking, even with a diamond tool. Oh my. Uh, what's the deal here? Well, uh, you need better tools to mine these awesome nether ores. Uh, these guys are Ardite and Cobalt. And I'm going to show you right here, if I jump back to my mod list of Tinker's Construct mods, uh, you can see Cobalt Ore and Ardite Ore. You need to make better tools with better mining levels in order to get those. Uh, now let's dig through our book here and see what we can't come up with, the materials in your book. Hmm. So uh, we have this guy to look at. Materials and you. All right, so what has um, a better mining um, uh, ability than diamond let's see uh harvest level two harvest level one keep going one 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 three uh vulcanite ore has a or uh aluminite has an harvest level of four. Oh, that's good that's probably what we might need uh netherrack doesn't seem to do it uh yeah hmm cobalt all right well that's what we're trying to get right yeah probably now there's other stuff here uh ardite and manilium oh yeah i'm not gonna be able to pronounce that it has a harvest level of five um holy cow that's pretty crazy so we're gonna need to make some of these nifty metals here uh but how do we make them well we're gonna have to get ourselves a smeltery thingy uh these guys are pretty nifty well, i'll show you right here inside your materials and you book let's take a look uh, you can see here that for the smeltery, you're going to need a bunch of seared bricks right there. It's telling you, okay? Now, seared bricks are made by smelting uh, grout, which is a combination of clay, gravel, and sand, okay? Smelt that up, and you'll get the seared brick. And then you're able to make all kinds of different things that you're going to need to use to combine your metals and make some stuff. So let's get this going right now. So, upon crafting your seared bricks in a crafting table, you'll get the Mighty Smelting Book. You can see I just got one there. Uh, I actually had one in my inventory already that I got from NEI, so that's why I had two. Mighty Smelting. What's this do? It makes the most of your metals. 
Cool. Uh, there's a bunch of introduction in here that shows you all the different stuff you can make, but then in the end it's going to show you the different materials you're going to need in order to make a smeltery multi-block structure. That's right, it's a multi-block. Cool. Uh, so there's some information here that you can read up on. So let's go ahead and make a nifty little smeltery. Here it is in World. Nice. So that's a picture of what you're going to want to make. Now you're going to need at least one smeltery controller. Okay, I can handle that. One smeltery controller. Okay, what else am I going to need? Uh, according to the book, I'm going to need a lava tank and nine seared bricks. All right, a lava tank right here and nine seared bricks. Now, of course, you're going to want to create these manually, but I'm just trying to make this a little quick for the mod spotlight. You guys don't want to watch me craft for a few minutes, do you? Any combination of 10 seared bricks, lava tanks, or drains. Okay, uh, we're also going to need a faucet and a casting table. All right, I can handle that. So let's get started building our smeltery. Now you're going to want a 3x3 three three area as your base, and uh, it might not be a bad idea to place that one level into the ground. Uh, you can really build it however you want, but I just like to put it in the ground like that. Cool, good starting point. Now on all three sides of that, you're going to want to put some more bricks. So something along these lines, okay? But here's where things get important. You want to make sure to place uh, a smeltery controller and a lava tank. And they have to be one level above that basin that you made, okay? And then the other block here is, uh, you know, fine. Oh, look, we've got some flames going on. That's a good indication that something was done right. If this flame turns on, you know you're doing well so far. Now, the other thing you're going to want is a casting table and a seared faucet. Now, um, we could put these, you know, on the same levels here, I think, but I'm going to bring this up and build it a little bit taller, kind of like so. And uh, what I'm going to do is put my smeltery drain right over there, okay? And then we're also going to put the seared faucet and the casting table. Now if I come over here, we'll see that things are not much different. However, if you want to get yourself some hardened glass here, uh, you can kind of place that up there. Uh, you can also do this with uh, hardened windows, place them up like that. And uh, you'll see now that the interface shows the more storage that you have options. So that's pretty spiffy. Now to get started with this thing, you're going to need some lava. So let's take that, get ourselves some lava buckets, and start filling this thing with lava. Oh, cool. Look at that. Uh, keep it on going, filling them up. Nice. So you can see here we've got a small amount of lava in there. Uh, we can keep adding to it if we want and just get more and more in there. Okay. Now uh, you can also see that by placing, uh, you know, this thing in here. Oh, there we go. Nice. Look at that. Cool. Uh, we've got decent amounts of lava inside. Pretty good amount. Good. Now we're ready to roll. So now we've got a smeltery and we're ready to roll. So how do we use this thing? Well, according to the Mighty Smelting Book, we've got four types of um, alloys that we can make. The first and most important is aluminum brass. You're gonna need three aluminum and one copper. Simply open up the interface and place one piece of copper and three aluminum. Okay, now when you place those, they go ahead and show up inside this uh, little nifty place, but it's just visual. They're not actually there. You can see I'm even like, you know, standing in them and stuff. So it's just a visual representation of the fact that you've got metals in there. Now, uh, you don't want to place them in manually, so don't just get out your uh, <clears throat> metals and just place them in by right clicking. That will not work. You actually have to place them in the smeltery. Now, it's going to use up some of the lava and it's going to start melting down all the metals. And you can see different metals melt at different speeds. Even though I put copper in first, the the aluminum is uh, rapidly passing it in terms of its heat level. Once the aluminum has melted, we'll see that inside the smeltery. So now we can see that the uh, aluminum is uh, completely melted and we can see there's a little bit of tank inside being filled up by liquid aluminum. Cool. Now we've also got the copper here and it just finished melting and now we've got this nice yellow metal here which is uh, the, the uh, alumite bronze or alumite copper or what, what was it called? Aluminum brass, that's what I'm looking for. Nice. Uh, now this is really important stuff. All you have to do to get it is right click on the little spigot there and it'll drain out and you'll have this liquid stuff that after a few seconds will cool off. Then you can right click on it and you've got your first item, the blank cast. This is really important. It's used to make all the future casts. Now if you want, uh, you can right click on this again and get another cast. Cool, and it'll harden up and you're good to go. Hmm, more liquid in there still. Let's give it a shot. Oh, nice. Wow, I wonder how many casts I can get out of this. Ooh, looks like maybe four. 
Yep, I guess that makes sense, considering there were four metals in there. All right, not bad. So the casts, what can we do with them? Well, we use the blank casts over here on the stencil table, and we can go ahead and get some new stencils. Uh, we need to pour the liquid metal into the stencils, and wooden stencils probably wouldn't work to pour molten hot liquid metal into. So we need this uh, cast, the blank metallic cast, which can hold the molten uh, metal and make uh, nifty stuff. So let's get some stuff. I'm gonna get a tool rod cast. I am going to get a uh, pickaxe head and I'll even get one of these guys here the tool binding nice so I want to make another pickaxe using molten metal so let's use our smeltery again and get some kind of nifty metal so according to this nifty book here alumite has a harvest level of four okay sounds good alumite how do we make that good question let's flip through this book and find the alloy combination for alumite there it is five aluminum two iron and two obsidian okay so five aluminum one two three four five uh we're also going to need some iron two of that and some obsidian two of that okay two iron two obsidian Okay. Now you should also note that you can't stack items inside this table, so I can't keep adding aluminum to it. That does not work. You have to put each item in individually. All right, so let's just double check that I put the right recipe in there. Five aluminum, two iron, two obsidian. Looks good. Five aluminum, two iron, two obsidian. So it looks like uh, aluminum melts pretty quick. Iron, that's eh, going to take a while, as is probably obsidian. So I'll be back after that's all melted down. All right, looking good. We've got some of this awesome stuff in here. We can see that all the blocks have disappeared, so let's go over and place our casts. So I'm going to get a tool binding cast. Uh, let's actually first get the pickaxe head. I'm not so worried about the other ones. The head's the most important part, because that's what determines the actual uh, mining stuff. Right-click on it, and boom. Nice. Now when I right-click this guy, I get an alamite pickaxe head. Oh, that is cool. That is really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and get, um, you know, one of these. Boom. Oh, that's nice. Oh, there we go. It finished. And then uh, we need the tool binding cast. Good. I had enough liquid for all that stuff. And even some more remaining. Cool. All right. So now that I've got these things, let's put the tools together at the tool station. Okay. Let's uh, take care of it. Tool station, go. Uh, I want the alamite binding. And remember, we're making a pickaxe. So alamite binding, alamite rod, and pickaxe head. Nice. Good mining speed. Mining level is high. Now I should be able to use this guy to mine those uh, ores that I couldn't mine just a minute ago. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. We've got ardite and cobalt, which, by the way, happen to come together to form the best material of all. So we can check out smeltings here and see that um, manilium is made from one cobalt and one ardite. You're going to want to check this stuff out because it is the best material to make stuff out of. If we zip over here, manilium has a base durability of 1200, a handle modifier of 2.5x, full tool durability 3000, massive, mining speed, base value of 10, highest mining level of 5 better than anything um, and even a decent base attack um, and its material ability is awareness which isn't implemented yet but sounds like it's going to be pretty cool so manilium is a really cool material definitely recommend giving it a shot once you get up to the ability to make it so really good stuff and then with a base mining ability of 10 uh, of course a base speed of 10 you can really amp that up with some uh, upgrades. And the last thing you should note is that all these metals are considered forged liquid, so they should be storable in any forged liquid tank. Cool. Uh, you can go ahead and store them in there and all kinds of nifty stuff. You can put them in buckets or put them in tanks, whatever you want. And of course, you can even pump it through liquids like this. Just go ahead and give it a good hit from the liquid duct and ta-da! Now don't worry about the rendering, that's just a slight bug. So the fact that that renders as a blue liquid uh, is a minor bug, should be fixed relatively quickly. Um, but again, this is uh, a beta version of the mod, so don't worry about that. All right, so cool stuff that you can do with these liquids. You can make all kinds of nifty tools with all kinds of different abilities, different combinations. I can't even imagine how many different combinations of tools there are, especially when you factor in those modifiers. Now this mod is just getting started. There's a ton of other features on the way. Uh, 
bunch of stuff planned for the mod, so definitely worth downloading and checking it out. Uh, we are using it on Forgecraft 2, so if you want to check out uh, some of the nifty things you can make with it, I didn't even show you guys everything. I didn't show you frying pans. <laughs> nifty little funny weapon, as well as wooden battle signs, different battle signs, or another kind of, uh, almost kind of like a comedy weapon. Uh, Maddox are pretty nifty. I believe that they are a combination of axe and shovel, so you can use these guys to both harvest wood and dirt, so definitely a nifty tool to use. There's a bunch of different uh, weapons as well that we didn't get too deep into, uh, but if we dig through the books, you'll be able to see exactly what they are. Uh, definitely give those books a read because they'll pretty much tell you all the information that you need to know. Uh, but we can see here that the Matic, it does tell you, is a uh, is both a farming tool, its purpose is to till soil, it also works somewhat like an axe and a shovel, but is not a replacement for either. Okay, nifty stuff. The broadsword here, uh, basically, uh, when you right click to block, it cuts the incoming damage in half, whereas the long sword allows you to lunge forward uh, at breakneck speed. So that's the right click ability on the long sword, and the rapier allows you to take a small hop backwards when you right click on it. And it even has some nifty natural abilities here. So, uh, like the rapier here, it does twice the damage when you're uh, sprinting and knockback. Oh, that's cool. Armor pierce ignores armor and blocking. Wow. See? Nifty, nifty stuff. Quick strike. The enemy is stunned for less time. Wow. Nifty, awesome, cool abilities on all these different weapons and tools and lots more coming. I've seen a lot of changes just in the last couple versions of Tinker's Construct. So, Hope you guys enjoyed checking out the Tinker's Construct Mod Spotlight. I will be keeping up to date on this mod and showing you guys all the nifty stuff coming down the line. Alright guys, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy!